Ethrian the Lich is here and he's gonna have yo mana. Despite having a simple set of abilities, his purpose is to make your life complicated. Whether he's eating up the lane creeps, slowing you until you die, or peeling apart your team from a tight formation, Lich will do everything in his frigid powers to make you sad. Stay frosty, it's the history of Lich. Lich is a powerful support who can slow down enemies and disrupt the flow of all phases of the game. His first skill is Frost Blast, which is a point and click ability that deals magic damage and applies both a movement speed and attack speed slow to a target. A small area around the primary target will also be affected, although these units will take less damage. Ice Armor is a spell that you can apply to any friendly unit or building. This gives them increased armor for a long duration, and any hostile attacker will have their movement speed and attack speed slowed. This skill can be autocast by right clicking on its icon. You know, if you don't want to actively think about being a good friend to your teammates. Sacrifice is a spell that targets your friendly creeps, converting a portion of their current HP into mana for Lich. While it's true that this spell is useful for sustaining Lich's mana, a lot of value comes from simply getting rid of the creeps in lane, thereby denying your opponents the last hit and experience. On that note, all allied heroes will share the experience from the sacrificed creep, provided they are in the experience range when sacrifice is used. Chain Frost is Lich's ultimate ability. This releases an orb that bounces between enemy units, damaging them, and you guessed it, slowing their movement speed and attack speed. This is particularly useful for inflicting panic onto grouped enemies, or in the case where no one's looking, you can use it to farm an entire creep wave for free. And wouldn't you know it, patch 7.20 came out during the production of this video, and Lich has two new abilities. Uh, let's get into it, I guess. Ice Armor has been replaced by Frost Shield. This buff can be cast on allies and lasts for a short amount of time, reducing incoming physical damage for the target. All enemies within an AoE of the spell will take a small amount of magic damage and be slowed briefly. This damage also affects towers. Sacrifice has been replaced by Sinister Gaze, a channeling single target ability that makes an enemy walk towards you. Menacingly! It's kind of like a mix between Shackles and Meat Hook, disabling and displacing the enemy for a small amount of time. Lich first chilled his competition to the bone in the original Dota All-Stars map, making him among the first heroes available in the game. Here, Lich uses the name and model of Kel'Thuzad, a prominent character from the Warcraft universe. His original description labeled him as a ranged hero, proficient in the powers of ice. In 6.20, a player by the name of Cerados won a hero description contest to update Lich's story to something a little bit more robust. In this, he was forcibly raised from the dead by the Lich King to serve as his elite magical guard. He utilizes an array of ice magic to deal with his foes, and at the end of the day, he's nothing more than a murderer without a trace of warmth. Since Lich uses Kel'Thuzad's voice lines, he comes across as a calculating right-hand man, lining up perfectly with his lore. Is there something amiss? My talents are yours. Hmm, that sounds logical. As Lich came into Dota, his skills lifted a lot from the Warcraft hero. The original Lich skill set did include Frost Blast and Sacrifice, although they are named Frost Nova and Dark Ritual. Before Ice Armor came around, taking its place was a skill called Decaying Soil, which acted a lot like Enigma's Midnight Pulse. It lays down an AoE for 4 seconds and damages non-hero units and buildings for a percentage of their max health underneath it. This skill can also damage your allied buildings, in case you want to take a proactive approach to being a quitter. His original ultimate was a spell known as Soul Steal, and it simply steals a set amount of HP from an enemy unit. This version of Lich is much more offense-oriented, and would probably find a nice home in the mid lane if he were still around nowadays. In 4.0, Soul Steal was replaced by Glacial Crush, which encases a unit in a glacier of ice, dealing damage every second at the cost of 200 mana per second. In 5.1, this was replaced by Chain Frost, the lovable frozen pinball of death that we're still dealing with today. To complete the image of Lich as we have come to know him, Ice Armor replaced Decaying Soil on 5.59, although in this stage, it was known as Frost Armor. In this first run, Lich didn't have too many patches that significantly affected his gameplay. However, there were a few bug fixes that point out amusing interactions that Lich had. Prior to 6.20, Lich could use Dark Ritual to kill allied couriers. Honestly, between this and Decaying Soil, Lich seems like the go-to hero for rage-quitting babies. Before 6.31, Frost Armor slowed Lushrak and Beastmaster whenever they used Diabolic Edict or Wild Axes, respectively. I would imagine this happened due to Frost Armor slowing all sources of physical damage, and both of these spells dealt mixed damage, which had a physical component to them. Before 6.32, Chain Frost had bounced off of Death Ward, so a well-meaning Witch Doctor had to deal with the unfortunate circumstance of creating another target for Chain Frost to bounce off of. Lich was ported over to New Earth as the Dragon Mounted Plague Rider on September 19th, 2009. His lore is really straightforward, pretty much just telling us how smelly he is. His goal in life is simply to spread disease across the land of New Earth. 
The Plague Rider was initially a direct port, with his set of skills named Contagion, Cursed Shield, Extinguished, and Plague Carrier, with the Staff of the Masters upgrade renaming his ultimate to Epidemic. In patch 4.00, Cursed Shield was replaced with Earth Blight, an AoE spell that deals a small amount of damage, reduces magic armor, and slowly pulls enemies back to their original position over a short amount of time. This single change makes such a big difference in his gameplay. Now Plague has an additional form of crowd control that isn't a slow, and landing this spell on at least two heroes makes his ult that much more devastating. As is the norm with Han, Plague Rider's voice acting is nothing special. He has a few awkward lines, but at least he has something to say. Infection abound. A dragon will kill you. Are you down with the sickness? Luckily, if this isn't doing it for you, you can at least mod the sound files to change his ultimate's casting sound with my absolute favorite thing in the world. He also has an alternative avatar that changes him to the Frost Rider, mimicking the look and theme of Lich in the original Dota. Plus, he's riding on top of a creature that looks like Winter Wyvern. So hey, looks like you get two for the price of one here. In League of Legends, Lich's kit doesn't have quite enough skill shots to be ported over. However, a couple of his skills do exist in Runeterra. Brand's Pyroclasm is their version of Chain Frost. This launches a bouncing fireball that serves the purpose of spreading magic damage and punishing enemies for grouping up too closely. On top of this, if an enemy is hit with another one of Brand's spells beforehand, they also get slowed when hit by Pyroclasm. If you wanted Bran to simulate Lich a little more closely, you could always pick up the Cryocore Brand skin for a more shivery take. Gangplank's first edition of Raise Morale also bore resemblance to Dark Ritual. This is a passive spell with an active component. The passive part would increase Gangplank's attack speed and movement speed, and the active portion would deny an allied creep to give that same buff to all allies within range for 10 seconds. Of course, this spell was later reworked for ruining the laning phase of all of his matchups. But what happened to Kel'Thuzad? Well, his legacy continued on in Heroes of the Storm. In this, he's an incredibly powerful burst mage with pretty complex gameplay, requiring a whole lot of prediction to play effectively. He does retain a couple of spells from his Warcraft 3 days, namely Frost Nova and Death and Decay. Because of this, he doesn't really resemble Lich's playstyle, but it is nice to see where the concept led in Blizzard's interpretation of the character. Just to tie everything together, Cassia in this game does have a spell similar to Chain Frost in the form of a heroic ability called Ball Lightning, which as you can probably figure out, throws out a nuke that bounces between enemy heroes. The unique part about this is that the ball also bounces onto Cassia, so in a one-on-one -on -one engagement, she can act as a conduit for the spell to deal more damage. She can also pick up a talent that makes the ball bounce indefinitely, the same as picking up an Aghanim Scepter with Lich. The dead man drifted into Dota 2 during the first international tournament. Names of course had to be changed around to avoid the terrifying fury of Blizzard's lawyers. Lich's name went from Kel'Thuzad to Ethrian. However, since his name never comes up in any voice lines, it's safe to say that this is more of a placeholder than anything. Lich's concept art also showed that there were very different plans for the hero. Of the three that we've seen, it looks like they were heading in the direction of a skinny zombie or imperfect corpse. In any case, all of them seem to have a natural control over the ice, with the mist flowing from their bodies. Strangely enough, these concepts didn't seem to translate into the first model they designed. Tell me why he looks like that face I make when I find out someone stole my lunch at work. He's not all that threatening, and it looks like he just learned how to use magic for the first time in his life. Finally, his low violence model covers up his face a bit with a mask that makes him look like Bane. No, no, not the hero, the Batman villain. No, no, not the luchador, the, the European. There we go. Lich's lore happens to be really captivating and well written. As a frost mage, Ethrian used his power as a tyrant, enslaving entire kingdoms with his spells. His subjects later revolted and bound him with a rope meant to keep him subdued for an eternity. They threw him into what they thought was a bottomless pit, but after a year of falling, he was snagged on some rocks. He laid there for a long period of time until a geomancer named Onhill fished him out, resurrected him to ask some questions about the pit, and was instantly devoured by Lich for his troubles. Although he's fairly morbid as a character, his voice lines give off a jolly vibe, and he has puns certifiably approved by the council. Council of Dads. Given that he's voiced by Gary Schwartz, the voice actor of TF2's Demo Man and Heavy, this isn't a surprise at all. I am the dead of winter. What's a little frost among friends? That's Frost Jack! Most of Lich's interactions with other heroes is fairly generic, except for Rubik, who chastises him and seems to think that Lich is capable of much more. Had you chosen to live, Lich, what a magus you could have been. The cold has numbed you to wonder, Lich. Fortunately, Lich also has a couple of sets with descriptions that further expand upon his background. 
The Dead Winter set explains just how strong Lich's frost magic is in the canon of Dota. The Dead Winter Grasp, Dead Winter Soul, and Dead Winter Sash all have a similar theme of the ice growing so powerful from within Lich's body that it seems to be slowly taking over its host, and the enchanted clothing is the last line of defense that keeps it all in control. The Dead Winter Mantle, on the other hand, was a cloak he wore while he was alive, except he imbued it full of evil snow. The Bindings of Eldritch Ice set has a general theme of Lich's clothing being worn as a form of mockery to those who betrayed him. The Mantle was a series of metal spikes hammered into his skull. The Bracers are the charmed ropes that bound him in the lore. The Glacier is his hatred embodied in the form of icy spikes, and the Binding is the weighted belt that sunk him into the Black Pool. The Bindings also tell us that Lich floats around just because gravity has no effect on him in his current form. Lich also has a ward designed after him in the Black Pool Watcher. Its description tells us that the little guy is silently surveying, and plotting the theft of your mana, and your life. Yeesh. Last on the list is the Glare of the Tyrant. This seems to be another Lich's head that Ethrian took in order to augment his own powers. It looks like he learned from Onhill's mistake, as the description mentions that the head alone will do, showing that our Lich knows that it's better to err on the side of caution. As of now, there isn't much information regarding Lich's involvement in Artifact. In his card's lore, he mentions both Lion and Crystal Maiden by name, suggesting that he is keeping a close eye on them, so they probably have a developing connection. Either way, he's very optimistic about the situation in Roseleaf, the center of the conflict. The Vools are desperate in their fight against the Bronze Legion, and being the enterprising scholar he is, Lich understands that he can use this battle to kill whomever he pleases. The only question that remains then, is who will be his first victim? In this game, he also takes Sacrifice as his ability, and Chain Frost as a signature card, thus bringing a ghastly chill to the world of digital TCGs. Unlike in the original, the patches in Dota 2 affected Lich in noteworthy ways. At first, the slow from Ice Armor only affected melee units, so in 6.79, it applied half of its slow effects to ranged units. The slow also started stacking with Frost Blast, giving his spells more potency. Sacrifice had some numbers tweaked, but the important detail to note is that the converted creeps give experience to all heroes in a radius, split evenly among everyone. This sped up Lich's level gain, and allowed him to hit his power spike sooner than usual. In 6.81, Ice Armor could be cast on buildings, slowing down sieges by annoying the enemy so hard they just go home. Lich's Aghanim Scepter upgrade also removed the Chain Frost bounce limit, meaning that it can go on infinitely as long as there are targets to absorb the blows. This led to a cheesy strategy where you could cast Chain Frost on an Ancient Creep camp every time the spell goes off cooldown, and an unsuspecting enemy roaming would get hit with a stationary drive-by. In 6.82, Ice Armor now fully affects ranged units, upgraded from the half effect in 6.79. This spell could also be cast on spell immune allies, which is a great relief for support players all over. I mean, don't you just hate it when those greedy carry players activate BKB for the sole purpose of not letting you help? What a bunch of brats. In 6.85, Sacrifice no longer splits experience with enemies. Not that it came up too often if you were playing him right, but it's a pleasant quality of life update nonetheless. In 6.87, Frost Blast and Chain Frost no longer shared a slow debuff, which simply means that they're slow stack now. Similar to the Ice Armor change from 6.79, this means that all of Lich's spells can stack their slows, instead of keeping his targets at a flat slow amount. In 6.87b, Sacrifice had a huge nerf to its cooldown while its mana conversion increased. Judging from how well it was doing at the time, this was likely done to keep the laning phase more equal in terms of last hits and experience. It would just be too advantageous with the Lich babysitting a lane, so this was a nice way to preserve everybody's sanity. In 7.00, Lich's talents brought an entertaining build path. While you could opt for a more traditional support role with the extra cast range, gold per minute, and ice armor talent, he gained the opportunity to go full on carry. At level 20, he could pick up an extra 150 attack damage, and at level 25, he could have a passive Eye of Scotty. Normally, the criticism here is that games should end before supports even make it to that level, but with Sacrifice giving Lich extra experience, and a Hand of Midas accelerating his levels, this was entirely doable. Given that Lich has other abilities that can slow down enemies, and a way to buff himself with armor, a stampeding carry Lich is one of the more horrifying builds to witness in the game. In 7.07, .07, the talents were slightly reworked, with the right side level 25 path sticking out. Ice Armor providing an extra 30 health regen gives allies a chance to recuperate during a team fight, or it could be used on damaged buildings to stay in the game. It's a lot like Living Armor, but with its cooldown so low, and the regen so high, Lich can make a game freeze in its tracks. In 7.20, Lich had a slight rework as I mentioned earlier. Ice Armor was replaced by Frost Shield, and Sacrifice was replaced by Sinister Gaze. His talents were also reworked slightly to accommodate for the new changes. This patch also has an undocumented nerf, as it delayed the release of this video by a couple of days. Lich may look like a brittle sack of twigs, but give him an opening, and he'll wipe out a team single-handedly. 
His skills are pretty simple as far as mechanics go, but the amount of impact he has in the overall game is a testament to how well they're designed. His ability to control the pace of the game is unmatched. And there's... Snow Way. I would ever want that to change. I'm Dennis the Tall, and that was the history of Lich. So first of all, I want to give a big tall thank you to Joao Fontes, who became my first supporter on Patreon. This episode was actually chosen by him as a way of expressing my gratitude. It's really humbling and exciting to get some traction on there, and for that, I am very happy. Moving on, a couple of my favorite comments from the History of Shadowfiend video. RJ Walker reminds us, Remember that clockworks cogs have souls and thus living creatures. Victim chimes in with, Remembering my early Dota 1 experience, when I thought Requiem releases all of my souls, so I'm not really using it because it'll be a pain in the ass to recollect them back. Good old days. And Papa Steel's favorite strategy is to go physical damage and f them all on mid lane. Can't argue with that. That's all I have to say for now. Please follow me on Twitter and support this channel through Patreon. I swear if everything goes well, I won't have to post nude cosplay sets to keep this channel alive. Unless... that's what you... want me to do?